Welcome to It's a Woman's World, a show which discusses any and all topics under the sun from a woman's point of view. Here is Ali Naifani. Welcome to the show. Well, as you can see, we're not in our usual studio. Today we are at William Mitchell College of Law, and I am surrounded by a group of very talented women from an organization called Forward Global Women. I'd like to introduce our first guest. She is Senator Sandy Pappas. Welcome. Thank you very much, Ali. I'm very yes. happy to be here with my colleagues. We are so happy you are here. And uh, you are the president of the Minnesota Senate. You are also a longtime women's rights activist. So thank you That's for right. being with us and getting us started on this conversation. Thank you for having me. And you're going to introduce our guest today. I will today, and I'd be happy to talk as well about Forward Global Women. Um, I'm with two of the founders of Forward Global Women. To my right is uh, Rena Bartol. Rena is a female activist, former chair of the Israeli Women's Network, and a former deputy mayor. Rena Bartol, very happy to have you in. She's nice from Israel. To be here. Happy to have you in Minnesota. Uh, to your left, Ali, mm -hmm. is uh, Professor Rula Kwawis. Rula is also a co-founder, a co-founder of Forward Global Women with Rena and myself. She is from Jordan. She is a professor of uh, feminist theory at the University of Jordan, an author and an educator. Welcome to Minnesota. Welcome Thank back. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm so excited to be here. Thank you, Sandy. Next, we have uh, Dr. Panina Steinberg. Dr. Steinberg, Panina, is a social scientist and a researcher. And uh, she and Rula have been working on a very special project called uh, uh, Secure Personal Security Stories, which we'll be talking about later in the program. Thank you. Wonderful. Well, Sandy, why don't you start us off by telling us what is Forward Global Women? Forward Global Women is a group of uh, elected officials, former elected officials, activists, and academics all committed to developing women's leadership and uh, ourselves as stronger peacemakers in the MENA region, Middle East and North Africa. Mm -hmm. And we come together every year for convenings. We have met in Berlin last year. We've been in Minneapolis uh, in August. We've been in uh, St. Paul uh, several times. And so we bring people from the region and really develop relationships and dialogue. And when you say the MENA region, does that include the United States? Does the United States have an affiliation when you speak about that? That's a good question. Our focus is on the Middle East and North Africa, the MENA region. So we look at, at that with the U.S. participants being supportive and knowledgeable about the region. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, I have three daughters living in Israel, and so it's very important to me personally that we have peace in the Middle East. Yes, and particularly, why MENA? Why that area? The, for folks that may not understand, um, you know, what's going on then in that area? Is there a particular reason there's a focus there? Absolutely. I mean, we have a long, uh, a long time conflict between the Israelis and the Palestinians. We have difficult relationships between um, Israel and Jordan. Mm -hmm. And we have also the Arab Spring countries in Northern Africa that have been going through turmoil as well. So we're concerned about extremism, about terrorism, about uh, supporting women, women being at the table for peacemakers in that particular region. And why is this so important for women specifically to do this work? Why, why, what is it about women? Well, I think we, first of all, to, to continue the, the last question, we, we live in the hottest area in the world today. Uh, you know, it, it can be ignited with, with just a small match. And I think the fact that uh, we have been managing to get ourselves and our sisters from the other MENA countries together is uh, for us Israelis is a tremendous gift. The ability to sit uh, around round tables with women that there's no other way we can meet that come from Tunis, from Morocco, from Egypt, from Jordan. Um, it, it's really a gift for us. Why is it important uh, for women? Because um, it's sad to say that women are not in, in leading positions anywhere in these countries. Not that there are many leading positions in the world uh, as well, but in these countries in particular. Um, you know, we, we are probably 51% everywhere, 51% uh, of the population, and yet uh, we're not prime ministers there. We, uh, we are not heads of, uh, of universities, hospitals, uh, research centers. Um, and women bring a different voice 
women have many added qualities which uh, otherwise are not heard. Mm -hmm. And we would like our voices to be heard. Mm -hmm. We'd like our opinions to be heard. And we believe that if we could influence the people in our countries that our voices, our opinions, and our beliefs are worthwhile hearing, mm -hmm. maybe the situations would look different. Okay. So as a result of the work uh, that Lena just spoke about, bringing women together and having these conversations, what are the outcomes? What are you seeing from this work? I'm seeing lots of things, but I would like to commend Rina on what she has said, the idea of the voice to create a space for women. Mm -hmm. The outcome is uh, living in a better world, trying to be able to, uh, to join hands together and to do things, to collaborate and cooperate, because sometimes, you know, you have to cross borders, which is really very important, because I think that uh, you think of it as a line of demarcation, which you cannot really cross, but doing this, the outcome is that all of the borders become porous and you're able to penetrate through them and to see the other side. Women can do wonders together. I think that they can, you know, we can, we think out of the box, we believe in peace, we bring in just like different perspectives and opinions and so on. So the outcome is to be able to really try really very hard to get rid of the borders believing that we cannot really cross them so yes we can cross them and we can see the other side and be with women from all over the MENA region and envision a different if you want kind of world where women can make a difference mm -hmm. and a more concrete outcome is our personal security mm -hmm. stories mm -hmm. project mm -hmm. if Panini wants to Great. talk about yeah. that um, Project, the beginning of the project was a thought that we, we were thinking, why should we go with the general definition of security? Because we sort of know that the general definition of security is militaristic. It has to do with borders and armies and states, and women may have some other concerns. So we said, let's go ask the women of the MENA region. Mm -hmm. What do they think? What are their security uh, concerns? So that was the initial thought, and Vula and I sat together to run a pilot with the Egyptian women and, and uh, some Israeli women. Jordanian. Jordanian, Jordanian. Jordanian I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, Jordanian women and Israeli women. And But what we found out is, first of all, what we expected to find, that women have uh, wider concerns than, than military and, and uh, borders. They want security at home, a domestic security. They want the uh, security of uh, economics. They want to be, they want security for their children when they walk in the streets at night, and for the girls especially. But the, the other outcome was that people really wanted to connect with each other. I interviewed six women, six Israeli women, and I ran two focus groups in Israel, and each and every woman there wanted to be in touch with the Jordanian women at the other side of the border, just as, as you said. Would you like to say something about the Jordanian interview? I, 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 I had a lovely time because basically whenever you check online the meaning of security, it mm -hmm. tends to be elastic and so mercurial as a concept. But we're trying to, maybe after this pilot study, and we're trying to involve other countries as well, to come up with a new definition for it, perhaps a security, the human security. And just like Penina has said, it's basically, yeah, it's about my life and how secure I am, but you cannot really extricate this from the state as well, from what's going on. Mm -hmm. Like I remember in Jordan, like I conducted six interviews because, you know, Penina is the lead researcher, mm -hmm. so following the instructions and the directions, and I had ran, ran two focus groups, like many of them talk about their own lives, you know, inside the home, but all of them, every single one of them, I had six and then I had 13 and seven, like 26 women, mm -hmm. okay, di different diversity. Really very important, they said we're afraid of ISIS. Like, yes, I do care a lot about my life, my children. I would like to live economically, you know, just like that. But there is a threat. You know, there's a voice at the, at, the, at the end of your own, you know, just like head telling you, yes, I'd like to live a secure, safe life. But at the same time, the threat and the fear, the outside forces, the mm -hmm. crushing odds, odds against you. Mm -hmm. So they mentioned that in every single, in, in the, every single interview, mm -hmm. yes, I care about my human security, but we have to make sure that security security is nurtured on the outside as well. 
I want to feel safe, not only inside my home, mm -hmm. domestic, you know, abuse or whatever, but I don't, I would like to step out of my house and to be sure that my life is going to be safe and sound. Nobody is going to invade my life or is going to terrorize or even demonize me because simply I am a woman. A woman. Mm -hmm. So you see, forward global women mm -hmm. will receive this uh, pilot, this study mm -hmm. in the convening here. We will uh, listen, we will hear, we will share with the other participants. We hope to enlarge the pilot to other countries. Mm -hmm. And again, I'll come back to the point that um, we live in different countries. We live in similar or almost the same area. Mm -hmm. We come from different cultures, different religions, different needs. But at the end, at the end, mm -hmm. the basic needs and the basic desires mm -hmm. and the basics of life are very similar, I won't say the same, but are very sure. similar. Mm -hmm. And I can guarantee you that women that come from Morocco or Tunis don't know women in Israel. Mm -hmm. I can guarantee they don't know. They have an envision. <clears throat> they think, they read, they watch television, they hear on the radio. There's a lot of propaganda, there's a lot of PR about many aspects, about many things. And here with, when they come and face facts, and figures, it's easier to overcome mm -hmm. many problematic aspects that are much more difficult to overcome otherwise. Mm -hmm. And women, again, women is the connecting thread. Yes. What's also very nice about um, holding the convening and bringing women out of their environment and their milieu to uh, a state like Minnesota, mm -hmm. as we've done in the past, is the opportunity for the local community. Mm -hmm. So we've had um, fabulous support from our hosts. We've been, our sponsors have been Allianz for many years. Mm -hmm. We've been sponsored by World Without Genocide, by the Minnesota International Center, by uh, my synagogue, Shir Tikva Congregation. Mm -hmm. And we've also been hosted at the Minneapolis Women's Club and uh, two years ago at William Mitchell College of Law, where we are today. So we've had great response. Our participants stay with host families. They don't stay in the hotel. So they also get an opportunity to see how average Americans, how average Minnesotans live. And in many cases, we have, uh, we have Muslims, people from the Middle East, staying with Jewish families and getting to know each other. I know I took my guest. Um, who was from Egypt to uh, a synagogue service mm -hmm. where she had never been to a synagogue before. So it was an uh, amazing experience for her. And I remember, Rula, mm -hmm. several years ago, you came to the synagogue with me and you'd never been. Such a delight. We go back to the idea of what is common, because we believe we're so different. Yes. No, we have to rethink that yeah. and to unthink it. We can find connectivities, right. linkages. Like, women can do that. Yes. Women, I think, are the weavers, mm -hmm. so they bring things together. And I believe wholeheartedly mm -hmm. that this can happen. You know, with the way women have the ability to do that. Mm -hmm. So simply, by the way, to, sh you know, shared realities should be foregrounded. And we should talk about these, you know, not sameness, but, you know, just like not differences either, mm -hmm. but basically things that are in common and to build on these and to foster, if you want, a new kind of relationship. Mm -hmm. And so as, as I heard uh, Rena speak, and you again, you, you highlighted that concept of there are a lot of similarities at the end of the day. So as some of these women, though, may not know much about each other, may, as you said, may not know the, the countries they live in, or, or but at the end of the day, it sounds as though they have the same, perhaps the same interests. It's the great <coughs> added value of what forward Forward, forward Global Women is doing is really creating what we call a contact zone. We call a contact zone following Marie Pratt Louise. And a contact zone really is where you put people together, people who do not have a chance to meet otherwise, mm -hmm. like me and Rula. And you put them together in one room and you let them be or live together. The things that would develop, the relationship that would develop, would not follow former relations between the states of, of Jordan and Israel. Mm -hmm. That would be something more human, <coughs> humane, something more personal, something more professional, like we have developed. And this, and, and it has an authentic flavor to it. And I think this is what we're trying to grow here. And I just want to, to put a plug in here, which is really very important, because these stories, like we had readers, for instance, two narratives from Jordan and two narratives from Israel that have been chosen. And then you have 
the story from Jordan to be read by <coughs> readers from Israel. Okay, so basically, it's not to create, a, you know, the authenticity of the voice. Like you bear witness to your own life. You tell me all about, you know, what's really going on. Your definition, definition of security when it was breached, and then the added value is that somebody from Israel, a reader, is going to read my story, to read my voice, okay, and to comment on it. So that is the beauty of it. I think it was. This is Penina's methodology. I think that we are using co-creating stories mm -hmm. together, which is fabulous. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. like you, like I remember a reader from Israel commenting on a story, you know, just like narrated by a woman from Jordan. She said, I feel your pain. That is the interpretation. There is empathy, not sympathy. She does not say, I feel for you. I feel with you. I had tears in my eyes. Like imagine two women coming from two different lands, two different cultures, two different religions, but something brought them together, empathy. Mm -hmm. Empathy, I think, is foundational. And I could see that in the study itself. Isn't that beautiful, by the way? That is the essence of life. Absolutely. This is this is why we have forward global women. Mm -hmm. To I think just to to emphasize how important it is for women, mm -hmm. just basically by the way, to, to tell my story, somebody to listen to my story and to say, I hear you. Yeah. I'd, I'd like to add a word about the American thing because uh, you know Sandy is here as president of, of a, a global mm -hmm. project, but. It must be very clear that without the American team and without Sandy's uh, being not not just being president, but but being the creator of of this initiative, this could not happen. Um, I think many times I've I've known the American team now for four years and have changed very little. So it's women that that are leaders, that are politicians. It's very hard, very difficult, mm -hmm. to get to know us. Mm -hmm. Us, I mean women from the MENA countries. Um, we can talk about similarities and empathy mm -hmm. um, and, and how we feel. Uh, America stands aside a little bit. Uh, the United States is very fortunate mm -hmm. in, in being a different country, mm -hmm. in being a place where everything we are discussing now does not exist here anymore. Mm -hmm. and, and People have to realize and appreciate, people in this country have to realize and appreciate how good they have it, mm -hmm. even if they don't think so. We think so. Yes. Yes. And, and the umbrella, okay, the umbrella that the American team gives us by saying, uh, we're behind you, we're with you, we're standing alongside you. We don't exactly understand what's going on. We're not, we, we don't live there. Many of the issues that, that you're discussing, um, we know they exist, but we, we cannot uh, hold completely the, the, the essence of, of how big it is. Yes. Well, I think that's, a, that's an excellent point, and, and that's one I wanted to ask you, Sandy, mm -hmm. because for folks that are maybe watching this show right now, you know, in the MENA countries, well, that's, that's over and halfway across the world, and we hear about that on the news. Well, we live in our life in Minnesota. So why should, why should people here pay attention to this? Well, you know, the broader women's community, especially the academic community, they kind of get it and have been very supportive. <clears throat> our first convening was held at the University of St. Catharines, mm -hmm. and we're holding, we held our keynote speech was at the Women's Center at uh, the Humphrey School of Public Affairs at the University of Minnesota because they see these connections between women. And we've had, we have tremendous response from on our Facebook page, on our web page. Um, we tweet out our events. Um, and we have, like I said, we have these women who come forward and want to volunteer and want to host people. So I think they understand that there is this, um, the connection between women. And there are other women's organizations who also we work with, the International Civil Action Network, mm -hmm. Um, uh, Suzanne from the network has, was our facilitator for several events. Um, our keynote speaker, uh, Manal Omar, is from the U.S. Institute for Peace. So there are these connecting groups in, the, in, the, um, in Minnesota who do support our efforts in the MENA region. They get it. Okay. You feel that there is that support? Absolutely. Okay. Actions are taking by, are, can be taken mm -hmm. by decision makers by strong people, by lobbyists, 
by people who lead countries, by people who lead nations, by people who lead governments. Uh, I'm not underestimating anyone, neither around this table or any other table. I'm trying to say that we have to be realistic and we have to understand that the things we discuss and the things we can do are, to a certain extent, the most important thing, I believe, is to raise awareness. I think this television program, the, the fact that it, it's happening mm -hmm. is also to raise awareness, to let other people see whenever this is uh, shown to the public, when people will view it to say, oh, really, you know, here are some women, etc., etc. So what we're going to have to do is raise awareness in all the countries. We have to have our participants uh, be devoted to, where, to, to raising the awareness mm -hmm. in their countries. We have con to continue these meetings with, with different topics, with bringing different keynote speakers and different women, mm -hmm. and at the end make the circles and those cells, the circles, much, much larger, mm -hmm. enable for us to enable us to influence whoever we need to influence in our specific countries. Yeah. Now, you're talking about leaders mm -hmm. who are part of our uh, convening. They're members of the government that go in and out of the government. Sometimes they're current, sometimes they're past, sometimes they're future. Mm -hmm. um, we are talking about women who are heads of NGOs, who are academic professionals that publish um, uh, stories and information that's very significant. One of our participants is working on a, a book on extremism in Northern Africa that uh, will be published. So it, it's like Rena said, it's not easy to say we're going to have this particular action or outcome. And, and besides, besides, we all do what we can. Mm -hmm. You know, that's right. what's really important for the viewers I, I to know. We all do that. what we can. I want to add to that. Uh, you can work from the top down, but you can also enable grassroots work. Mm -hmm. And I know that just from my little angle from Israel and from doing this research, I was talking to friends, and many friends asked me, for example, this one friend who's an academic in, in university, she's working on families of people with disabilities, and she asked me, you know, you talk to this, people, to this woman, Rula, from Jordan, maybe she knows someone who's into these, these subjects too. Maybe we can cooperate. We're neighbors. We also don't have any opportunity to meet. So I asked Rula, and this might happen or might not happen, but this is something that they could not plan for. Mm -hmm. Right. And do you know what, whenever you say action, mm -hmm. I know that I cannot speak because just like Rina has said, mm -hmm. action is mental action mm -hmm. by unlearning yes. things, which right. is really very important. Like being in the convening, what happens is that we do not learn new things. We unlearn old things, mm -hmm. things that have been indoctrinated, like, you know, things in my mind, my mindset. Mm -hmm. Action is changing the mindset of the participants telling them it can happen, telling them that we can be part of the conversation. Mm -hmm. It's time not to be silent. Mm -hmm. It's time not to be silenced as well. Mm -hmm. So it's really very important. I think that we can, the consciousness, uh, we, we can raise it, we can be part of the conversation because we have been marginalized. We have been othered, you know. Now it is time for us, okay, to basically start a new process. And let me tell you something, which is very important. You see the women around this table, including yourself. Mm -hmm. I never underestimate my ripple. Never underestimate my ripple. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm part of the convening, but when I go and walk into my classroom, mm -hmm. the experiences I gain mm -hmm. will be shared with my kids. Mm -hmm. I call them my students, my kids, mm -hmm. with my friends, and so on. So the forward global women, we cannot underestimate mm -hmm. the ripple, mm -hmm. because it's really very important, just like a rippling effect making an impact, mm -hmm. changing the way people think, mm -hmm. mindsets, mm -hmm. not only learning, but unlearning, which is very significant and crucial. That's a beautiful point, that, and that the rippling effect. I, I hadn't thought of that before, but that is, that is really the heart of this, isn't it? It is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and so are you seeing, just, just as I hear you say that, though, curious to see the ripple effect upon perhaps men who may be watching, this, you know, the, the organization, the work you're doing. I, I think reason. actually it's more of a ripple effect on young women. Yes. And we have talked about um, if we can kind of raise the funding to do this, to bring in, to bring in a group of young women from each country that are uh, that are emerging leaders, that are the future leaders of uh, in their countries. Okay. Um, to also have them experience relationship building, experience listening to the other, experiencing the unlearning that Rula talked about. Okay. So, 
I, I do want to challenge uh, your question yes. about the men. Yeah. Since I guess some of your viewers are men as well. Yes, I presume. The world cannot exist without women. Uh, men have ruled the world for so many years, mm -hmm. and we see the outcome. Mm -hmm. It's not so good. Mm -hmm. we, uh, we would like to say, let's be partners. Mm -hmm. You listen to us this time. You hear us. You watch us. You help us. You support us. You enable us to do what we want, what we want to do. Some of the participants that come from the MENA country, let's not forget, they come from far away. Mm -hmm. To come from Tunis or Morocco or Jordan or Israel to America is, is a long haul. We leave families behind. We leave little children behind. Someone has to stay. So the men are, at least of our participants, they are partners. They're not partners enough to enable us to enter, mm -hmm. to enter those, those men circles. Mm -hmm. And uh, the reason they don't do that is, is, is ancient as history, because every chair that's emptied for a woman, a man sat there before. Mm -hmm. So it, it's, it's also something that, that will take time. Okay. We don't have that much time. So we're trying to cope in, in all ways and in all fields. And, and we try to reach out, and we try to say to the men, uh, you know, th this is our venture. This is something that's important to us. Yes, why don't you come? Why don't you listen? Why don't you share? Mm -hmm. Of course we want the young women to, to lead this. Of course we want new leaders. Of, co of course we want to support and encourage younger women to come and take hold because um, that's, that's the way life is. You must carry the flag and then turn it over to the next generation. Mm -hmm. I'm coming back to where we come from, yes. the Middle East, the MENA countries, different issues, different countries not necessarily democracies, okay? How do we cope with everything? Mm -hmm. And men have important roles in that as well. And we're not there yet to, to turn anything over but, or, or so, sort of to reach out, but yes, we are open, okay? Yeah. okay? Yes, we are open mm -hmm. to, to their voices as well. Okay, and also, Ali, like men are really very important, mm -hmm. but also we're addressing patriarchal women. Like it's really very important for women as well. Mm -hmm. The internalized oppression or the belief, mm -hmm. if you want, that I'm not good enough, I am not enough, you I know, cannot I, do it. I cannot do it. So it's really very important. Yes, men are part, you know, it's like uh, in the UN, it's 50 50 planet right now, the idea of. But we also have to, I think, there is this. Uh, big responsibility, a commitment that we have to be, that we have to make with women to change the way they think, mm -hmm. they perceive. Like when Virginia Woolf said, I hold the mirror and then I, I augment the size of men and then I diminish my size. I want these women to stand up tall mm -hmm. and to look, to make eye contact and to say, I'm enough. I have what it takes. And I can do it. I can do it. I'm volcanic. I can do it. Mm -hmm. I can blaze a new pathway. Mm -hmm. So these women as well, who live in corners, in nooks and crannies, mm -hmm. who have internalized misogyny and oppression for a very long time, these women have to shed the chains on their mind, on their head. Mm -hmm. So it's really very important to bear in mind that these women should be part of the equation as well. Well said. A lot of passion. A lot of good information. Thank you so much for being with us today. And we thank you for being with us today on It's a Woman's World, and we hope to see you next time.